Hey you guys, it's AJ Haynes here, back for part 2 of the Image to Plane 2.0 update. This time we're going to go a little bit more in depth on the Image to Plane effector. Um, we kind of touched on it briefly at the end of part 1, and this time we're just going to I'm just going to take you through a couple of scenes, um, kind of showing off just exactly what it can do um, and how it can work with different effectors. So right away, um, I'm just going to load a little scene of images. And you'll see it pop up there, always backwards, get rid of it now. And the image to plane effector came in already attached to the cloner, so we'll just increase the count here to say 50. And as I said in the previous video, one of the modes it doesn't work with is the radial mode. Um, you'll get sort of unexpected results if you try to increase the count. It's because it doesn't handle the y direction at all. It only takes into account the x direction. So let's set it back to linear. Everything's lined up. So instead, we're going to use the spline effector. So let's uh, click the cloner and do spline effector. Let's create a circle. Let's just set it to the x or xz axis. And let's drop our circle into the spline. And right away, you're going to see that everything's kind of lined up as you normally would expect. Um, that's because we need to set this in the spline effector. We need to set the mode to relative, which just means that it's going to keep the distance, the same distance the the images were or the clones were before the spline effector was applied, and they were all lined up with the image to plane effector. So as long as in the cloner. The effectors are in that order, image to plane effector on the top, spline effector on the bottom, things will line up. So let's go into the spline effector and go into the parameters tab in rotate them 90. Um, you'll notice they're all lined up with their gap in between. So let's say we wanted to add a bunch more. You're going to see that they will overlap. That's because you can only fit so many planes onto uh, around the, the circle spline. So we would just then have to go to the transform tab of the cloner and uniformly decrease the size, and you can get a bunch more in there. And that is how you can get your images lined up on a spline. And I'm sure there's a bunch of different you know, things you could do with that too. You could duplicate it and mess around with it that way. And you know, create a unique little setup of images. Kind of cool. So that's one way the effector can be used with other effectors. Um, the next one here I'm going to show you is kind of a different way to use it along a spline. And this one actually, if you remember in 1.0, or uh, sorry, part 1, I said uh, no grid is checked by default. That's because normally you don't need a grid. Well, here's an instance where you do need a grid. And this lets, it, lets the planes kind of bend along the spline here. And this is all done using the spline deformer rather than an effector. So the setup is basically just the cloner. All it has on it is, um, there's a random applied to it, but it's uh, not enabled right now. Um, the cloner just has basically the image to plane effector on it, lining things up, and then not in the clone or parent, but just inside of another null. If you put the deformer in there, it's going to line all the clones up along the spline. And then you can animate that along the spline if you want. And all the images will deform. It's kind of cool. And of course, you could add your random effector and really make a mess of things. And everything. 
everything will deform along a spline. And it's really cool. You can, it's obviously, uh, you can deform things and change it how you want to. But if that image to plane wasn't on, things would look pretty boring. So it's kind of nice that it keeps things lined up for you and everything's spaced so, so nothing will overlap. So that's one use there. And I'm going to show you guys one more. So the next scene I'm going to show you guys deals with um, loading an image sequence of files in and kind of using that as a quick time to play an image sequence inside of cinema rather than using a quick time. So just to create an example here, let me just select a single file um, from this image sequence. And it's a dark frame, <clears throat> but either way, let's grab the material and let's just go in here. If you guys have ever had to deal with this little window right here and dealing with quick times and doing calculate and all that, it's a pain to kind of fine tune things the way you want to, um, getting things to start when you want to, extending the range, all that. So I've found a better way using the image to plane plugin. So let me just delete that real quick and show you guys. I'm going to import a whole sequence of images. So I'm going to turn everything off. I'm going to leave the no grid option on. I'm going to select my folder of image sequence images. And I think there's around 200 or so images in there. And they're all 1920 by 1080 images. So they're going to take a little bit longer to load. Because as I said before, the larger the file size of the image, the longer it's going to take to load. So should be in here in just two seconds. And just to show you guys again, you can go into the script console and I've done a lot of tests here, as you can see, but the last one says that it loaded 226 images and it took 20 seconds to do it. So we've got my whole image sequence in here now. And one thing you're gonna notice is we start the count from zero and we crank it up, we're going to see a animation happen. That's because it's revealing the next layer of the image sequence, therefore creating a sort of little quick time movie. And we're going to set the range from zero, on frame zero, to 100 and frame 72 and if we go back to the first frame we're going to play and we're going to get an animation that's our whole image sequence playing from 0 to 100 so now you can import an image sequence and play it just like you would a quick time except now you have tons of control over it you can start it whatever frame you want to you can change the speed you know you could you know, it's going really fast. We could play it backwards if we wanted to. Start 100 at frame zero and and go backwards. You know, you could do slow-mo, you could do whatever you want because now you have kind of full control. And, and what's great too is now you have uh, control over the F-curves. So you can really fine tune the adjustment of speed and everything, so. So this tip really didn't have anything to do with the image to plane effector, but I thought it was a cool little thing to show you guys. Just because I thought it was a cool way to use image to plane to really control if you guys want to bring in uh, an image sequence animation and, you know, and mess with it kind of however you want to. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoy these tips and I hope you check out the plugin. It's a huge time saver and it's really fun to play around with can create some really cool animations with loading tons of images in. So get creative and if you guys have any questions or comments please leave them in the comment section below and me or Joran will get to them as quick as possible. So thanks for checking out Image to Plane. Hope you guys enjoy. Thanks.